Hello everyone, today's topic will be radiographic film analysis. We radiographers should produce an optimal and off-diagnostic quality of radiograph to help our doctors to diagnose the pathology of the patient. Being able to know how to evaluate a radiograph based on different characteristics that affects the image quality is important so that we can avoid possible misdiagnosis that can be brought by our radiographs. Film reject analysis is an important tool for identification of factors associated to suboptimal radiographic images and subsequent rectification. Aside from saving our patient from another exposure dose if it calls for a repeat examination, film analysis can help to achieve a reduction in cost for the materials that we use. Just a short review, let's have a short recap with the most important characteristics of radiographic image quality. First, we have the spatial resolution. It is the ability to distinguish small objects on the image. There are techniques that we often use on every examination that affects the spatial resolution of the image. Just like when using a fast screen speed, it will produce higher radiographic noise compared to a slow detail screens. This radiographic noise can lower the spatial resolution of the image as it will appear grainy. Another factor that affects the spatial resolution is the SID. SID is the distance of source to image receptor. If we shorten the distance of the source to our IR, there will be a magnification blur, and this blurring will cause a decrease on our spatial resolution, specifically on the detail of our image. OID is also a factor that affects our spatial resolution of the image. OID is the distance between the object or part under examination and the image receptor. Longer distance between object and image receptor will cause a magnification, therefore the outline of the image will be blurred and it's the reason why there will be a decrease in spatial resolution. Central ray angle also affects the spatial resolution due to distortion. We have two manners on how the central ray should be angulated. Cephalad, which is the tube is pointed towards the head, and caudad, in which the tube is pointed towards the direction of the foot. An increase in tube angulation may cause distortion of the image due to elongation and foreshortening, and it will decrease the spatial resolution of the image. The last factor that affects our spatial resolution is by using a large focal spot. It will decrease the detail on our image due to focal spot blur that is caused by the size of the focal spot that will be used. A small focal spot will have lesser focal spot blur, therefore the use of it will have an increased spatial resolution on the image. Another characteristic of the radiographic image quality is the contrast resolution. Contrast resolution is the ability to distinguish two adjacent structures with almost similar shades of gray. Contrast resolution is the density and contrast of our image. MAS, which is a quantity of radiation, is a primary controlling factor of the density. Higher MAS will produce high density on our radiograph. KVP, which is responsible for the penetrating ability of X-rays through the body, controls the contrast. We know that the organs inside the body have different densities and atomic numbers, and it have different absorption for radiation. Lower KVP means that there will be more X-rays that will be absorbed by the body that won't reach our silver halide crystals that are supposed to be exposed to radiation to make it into black metallic silvers once developed. An absorbed X-ray by the part of the body will appear as white on the radiograph. Enough penetration and amount of radiation is required to produce an optimum quality of the radiograph. In this matter, having higher MAS and lower KVP will produce this kind of quality, but the patient dose will be increased. Aside from the two technical factors, screen speed also affects our contrast resolution. Faster screen speed will produce more density that can lower down the contrast of our image. SID and OID also affect the density and contrast of the image. It follows the principle of inverse square law. Increasing the distance will decrease the intensity. 
in SID and OID, the intensity will be the supposed amount of density to be visualized on the radiograph. In comparison, decreasing the distance will increase the intensity of radiation that will interact on the silver halide crystals, meaning the density will also increase. Central ray angle will also affect the contrast resolution because of the difference in part absorption once the tube is angulated. Collimation is also a factor that will cause an effect in contrast resolution. Collimation is used to limit the scattered radiation. We already know that aside from unnecessary exposure, our scattered radiation may cause fogging on the image. This fog is an undesired or unwanted density that is casted over the image. Having an increased collimation means we will decrease the field size of what is being exposed. Therefore, the scattered radiation that causes the density will also decrease. In this way, the contrast of the image will increase due to limitation of fog from scattered radiation. Grid ratio is also used to limit the scattered radiation from reaching the radiographic field. Using high grid ratio will have a higher scatter cleanup, therefore the contrast of the image will increase. Radiographic noise is also an important characteristic for the radiographic image quality. Factors that affect our radiographic noise are the screen speed and the construction of the intensifying screen and radiographic field. And lastly, the artifact. This is what we'll be discussing for radiographic film analysis. Artifacts are any irregularity on an image that is not caused by the proper shadowing of tissue by the primary beam. It is also defined as an undesirable optical density or blemishes on a radiograph or any other medical images. Artifacts can interfere with the visualization of anatomical structures and can lead to misdiagnosis. There are three classifications for artifacts in screen film radiography. Exposure, Processing and Handling, and Storage Artifacts. Now let's go down to Exposure Artifacts. Exposure artifacts are associated with the manner in which the radiographer conducts the examination. First on our exposure artifact is the incorrect screen film match. It's the usage of a green sensitive film on a blue emitting intensifying screen or vice versa. It is also called as a spectral matching. There may be an effect for the resolution of the image since it doesn't match the spectrum of light emission and its sensitivity. Another type of exposure artifact is a poor screen film contact. It will appear as a smoothness in an area that may obscure some details on the radiograph. It can be tested or checked through a wire mesh test where we will expose the wire mesh in top of the cassette. Proper screen film contact should produce a high-definition image in which all the lines of the wire mesh is visible. With improper screen film contact, the resulting image will show smoothness on a certain area of the wire mesh that was radiographed. A warp cassette due to heavy objects that was put over it will also show some smoothness on the part affected. Another exposure artifact is the improper positioning of the grid. This will result into a uniform reduction of density across the entire field. Improper patient position and patient motion is also an exposure artifact as this may cause blurring on the radiograph. To avoid this, a clear instruction and proper immobilization technique should be implied if needed. Double exposure is also an exposure artifact. In where to exposure are made up on one radiographic film prior to processing. This is a common artifact on mobile radiography due to mixing up of exposed and unexposed cassettes. A proper labeling of the holder should be implied to avoid mixing up of the cassette. Incorrect application of exposure techniques will also result into an exposure artifact. Remember that in all examination, we have to be sure on what technical factors should be used for the patient to avoid repetition, as this will lead to another exposure of the patient to the radiation. Having too high MAS or high KVP 
will result into an overexposed radiograph in which there will be little detail that can be visualized from the image even when it is viewed through the negatoscope. Low MAS and low KVP may result into underexposure of the image. There will be too little density to the point that there is almost no image that can be seen. Last for the exposure artifact is the improper patient preparation. Prior to examination, we have to instruct the patient to remove all of their jewelries that may later obscure the part under examination. These jewelries include necklaces, pendants, hearing aids, chains, earrings, body and facial piercings, zippers, and watches. Aside from this, Clothing with buttons and thick shirt printings may also be asked to replace by patient count during the examination. For patients with long hair that will have chest x-ray examination, they should be instructed to tie their hair up without covering their back, as their hair may be shown as some haziness in the lung area and may result into misdiagnosis. The said accessories are considered as external artifacts. There are also internal artifacts that should not be removed. These are pins, fasteners, dressings, and splints or other metallic implants that was from an operation. If the patient has this type of an artifact, it should be noted on the request form. This is important for MRI examination as we know that MRI use strong magnetic fields to create an image and some metallic implants may cause a reaction during this type of examination. Here is a summarized table for the causes of exposure artifacts and their appearance on the radiograph. Improper patient preparation can show an unexpected foreign object such as jewelry that most surely shows as radio peak. Mixed up cassettes will have a double exposure of two different body parts once it's developed. Improper patient movement will cause blurring on the radiograph. And improper patient position will show grid cut off artifacts and poor screen film contact will obscure details on the image. Another category is processing artifacts. Most of it are pressure type artifacts that are caused by the transport system of an automatic processor. Pressure type artifacts usually sensitize the emulsion and appear as higher optical density. A scraped or removed emulsion due to lack of developer hardener may appear as lower optical density. First on our processing artifact is the roller marks. In an automatic processor, we use transport system and through rollers, our film travels to different processing tanks. One type of roller marks is the guide shoe marks. It caused by sprung or improperly positioned guide shoes in the turnaround assembly. Guide shoe is used before the developer. Therefore, it will cause pressing against the film, sensitize it, and will leave a characteristic mark. Guide shoe marks can be found on the leading edge or the trailing edge of the film parallel to the direction of the film travel through processor. Another type of roller marks is the pie lines. It occurs at 3.14-16 inch intervals because of dirt or a chemical stain on a roller which sensitizes the emulsion. Now, maybe you're thinking, why is it 3.14-16 inch interval? It is because the roller are 1 inch in diameter and 3.14-16 inches represents one revolution of a roller and the artifact appears perpendicular to the film's direction of travel through the processor. Another processing artifact is due to dirty rollers. Dirty rollers can cause emulsion pick off and gelatin build up. This will result in sludge deposits on film and appears as sharp areas of increased or reduced optical density. Chemical fog is also a processing artifact. This appears as uniform dull gray and is due to chemicals being improperly squeezed. Improper or inadequate processing chemistry can result in a special type of chemical fog called dichroic stain.
Dichroic stain means that there are two colored chemical stain on the image after processing. It appears as a curtain effect on the radiograph. Chemical fog can appear as yellow, green, blue, or purple in color. Last for our processing artifact is the wet pressure sensitization. This is a common artifact that is produced in developer tank. An irregular or dirty rollers can cause pressure during development and produce small circular patterns of increased optical density. Here is a summarized table for the common processing artifacts and its appearance on the radiograph. You can check it on Bushong for a more detailed reading. Now let's proceed with the last category of artifact, the handling and storage artifacts. Handling and storage artifacts can be acquired from improper handling and unsafe storage area for our radiographic films. First, we have the light or radiation fog. This will appear as a streak-like pattern of increased optical density. This can be obtained when the film beam is not shielded adequately from radiation or there are light leaks on the container and when the temperature and humidity inside the storage room is too high. Pressure marks can be obtained when the film is stacked too high as the weight will cause marks with increased optical density. Kink marks appear as fingernail marks and can be obtained from rough handling and can cause scratches with increased optical density. Next is static artifact. This is the most obvious handling and storage artifact. It is caused by the buildup of electron in the emulsion. Static artifacts are most noticeable during winter and periods of extremely low humidity. We have three types of static artifacts. Tree, smudge, and crown. Tree static can be obtained from rapid motions such as removing of film from interleaving paper. Smudge artifact is an electrical discharge that follows a path induced by dust, lint, or a rough intensifying screen surface. While crown artifact can be acquired from rapid withdrawing of a film from a tight box of film. And last on our processing artifact is the hyporetention. It is a yellow-brown stain that slowly appears on the radiograph after a long storage time that indicates a problem with hyporetention from the fixer. We can say that the processing system is faulty when there be a hyporetention on the film. Archival quality of the film should not exhibit any artifact such as hypertension even after long storage of time. Here is the summarized table for common handling and storage artifacts where it shows the appearance on the radiograph and what it causes. You can also check it out on Bouchon. And that sums up the radiographic film analysis lecture. I hope that this will help you on understanding more on how to evaluate a radiograph if it is produced with optimal quality that can help our physicians to diagnose a disease. Thank you for listening.